You are listening to KBFT's Boys Fort Veterans Series, a special Veterans Day series featuring stories from the Anishinaabe men and women of the Boys Fort Reservation who served in the United States military. My name is Fred McDougall. I'm a Boys Fort band member, Navy veteran. I joined the Navy in 1960. I served until 1964. I was stationed an aircraft carrier out of Boston, the USS Wasp, CVS-18. I actually was what they call a uh, helmsman, and I actually steered that aircraft when we were at sea. That was interesting. We, we played mostly war games with submarines and things like that. And uh, our aircraft carrier was an anti-submarine warfare aircraft carrier, and we were always patrolling looking for subs. I was also on a 5-inch 38 gun mount, which is a large, large gun mount. While I was on there, uh, I, have to, I have to say I, I really enjoyed it. Seeing a lot of things, launching aircraft is, is something that no, a lot of people don't get to see and recovering aircraft and uh, being up on the flight deck was a, probably the most dangerous place in the world. If you didn't keep your head on straight, you could, you could die real quick up there because there was so much going on all the time. The most memorable thing that I did while I was on the WASP, and we were out of Boston, so most people could remember or should remember the Cuban crisis. If anybody recalls what that was, was that's when Khrushchev and Castro got together and cooked up a plan to put intercontinental ballistic missiles in Cuba. We found out, because our U-2 flights picked up what was going on in Cuba, by that time he was pretty anti-United States and pro-Russia. Once the evidence was found by the president, you know, the White House, they monitored for a long time and they seen the missile bases being built and the silos being built and everything. And then Kennedy came on TV and said, enough of this stuff, these missiles can't be in this hemisphere. What's Cuba, 90 miles off of the coast of the United States? These missiles were capable of hitting any city in the, in the United States of America, just something that the United States could not tolerate. So Kennedy ordered a blockade and of course, being out of Boston, our task group was sent to Cuba. So now I'm down here in Cuba, and that was interesting because almost on a daily basis, I'd see Russian trawlers, and uh, we'd go to general quarters and on the gun mounts, and this wasn't a drill, it was active military strategy, was to load our guns and train them on the trawler. If I recall, we did it about four times, turn back Russian trawlers. You could go out on the deck and look at these Russian trawlers, because they were, you know, 500 feet away, you could actually see the missiles on deck that were covered up with tarps. Well, I was down here for 31 days. They finally settled the whole crisis, and the Russians agreed to take the missiles out of Cuba. We came back, and the funny thing about it was we, on that aircraft carrier, outside of what we did to alter the course of the Russians, we had no idea how severe this was. We didn't know how close we came to nuclear war. We were just a bunch of sailors doing our job. I've since seen documentaries on the Cuban crisis, and it, it still amazes me how we were ready to invade Cuba. We got it in time that most of the missiles and the silos and the things in Cuba were not ready. They couldn't have responded anyway, so we stopped it. That was my last duty station. I got out in 1964. I'm still active in a way with the VFW. I, I serve on the mid-range honor guard. Uh, I'm a drummer for the cadence for the uh, for the funeral march. Uh, we shoot rifles. We do a regular military funeral like most people have seen. 21 gun salute, flag folding, taps, and the whole thing. So I've been active in that for quite a few years, and I probably will be till I can't do it anymore. But I know people appreciate veterans. Uh, veterans Day is special to the Honor Guard because, you know, we have a, a lot of activities that involve paying tribute to our fallen comrades. And we say that a lot our band of brothers, whether they're still with us or gone. And uh, Veterans Day is an important day, at least to me, and it should be for the rest of the country. And it's getting so it is. In fact, it's more important to the country today than I can ever recall in the back. From uh, Ira Hayes all the way up to, you know, what we have today in the military, why Indian people served disproportionately? I think it was just more than being an American. This is their land. It probably means a hell of a lot more to an American Indian, and I'm sure it does, and I know it does. The Mother Earth here, the land where our ancestors are buried, means a lot more to Indian people 
than just being in the military. It wasn't like an immigrant protecting the Constitution of the United States. These people who fought in World War II in any military conflict all the way from the Civil War on up had stepped up the way they did, sacrificed what the hell they did, because they've got more invested in this country than just protecting the United States of America. This is their homeland. Thank you for listening to Boys Fort Veteran Series, brought to you by KBFT 89.9 FM and the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.